Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Mind of on Carl B TV. Uh, we're back. We're back in our first studio. It's uh, been a while since being here. I'm feeling some nostalgia, but today we have former, uh, sorry, a former boxing world champion, but now a producer and an actor <laughs> in the big time. Uh, welcome back, Jeff Horn. Uh, thank you. Good to be here as always. Thanks for joining me. I really appreciate it. So you've been busy. It's been a big six oh. months. Not really. I've, <laughs> I've had a few little projects happening, but I, I couldn't tell you really what I've been doing because it's just been one thing after another. Yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you mentioned just before we started that just life, obviously, you're so busy just always doing these different things and that just time just melds together. Yeah. Well, it's not... I don't go to a job every day where it's a set time, so every day can be different and it's hard to kind of remember every everything that I do every single day so yeah. everything kind of becomes a blur everyone's life is like that anyway we yeah. all do things and we're like oh was that this week or was that last week <laughs> but with me it's like nearly every day is like that it's like well was that today that we did that or was that yesterday <laughs> I definitely find that like if I'm on holidays and I have some time off and yeah you like you're, a week goes by and you're like what do I even do Where yeah did that week go? <laughs> sometimes nothing in a holiday that, but... <laughs> that's true yeah a bit of rocket league or watch the footy and then that's all um but if, well, tell me about a couple of projects you've been working on look um I've been probably more involved in the Amada program and going to schools and things like that and talking to kids about um, bullying and the effects that that has on kids and um, yeah and also um, I've been doing that for quite a while now but the newest thing I've had to do is I did a little film project not too long ago where I started an anti-bullying film actually uh, uh, called Slugger. And how did that come about? Tell us about Slugger. Um, well it was through Graham, Graham Quirk, he's a cousin of mine and um, he he runs uh, a, a place called Motiva and it's like a educating pla- platform for people to go on to and um, I basically did one for boxing and they came and did some filming and um, it all went well and the guys went oh we've got an idea I reckon we could write up a short film because he was a teacher as well yep. uh, Daniel and Ash they they did it and um, I was pretty keen I was like yeah sure it sounds like something I could do and um they organized it all got the people got the cast together did the right. script and yeah so you did this uh the these i guess little videos to teach people about boxing yeah and then the idea came to you uh daniel and so who ash ash came to you and like oh look we've got an idea for a short film do you remember how quickly it like transpired from that <laughs> idea to um when i said yeah i was keen i think yeah. they were pretty quick on it to go, <laughs> yeah. okay well let's get this together and I think they probably started writing the script straight away and yeah. it was all done and dusted pretty quickly after that. Yeah, wow. Well, it did seem like a pretty quick turnaround So when I saw you first talking about Slugger on your Instagram and and then Good Flicks launching and then the the movie. Like, I feel like that was just a quick quick amount of time and then my first thought was, I've got to ask Jeff how long it took because surely it couldn't have been just a quick... It yeah. was... Oh, it was... Oh, the filming for it... How long did it go for? Um, it probably was well, not even a month, I reckon, worth of. Well, in, in my case, okay. in my in my involvement in it, anyway, I wasn't. I had like a week or two that I had to like give some days, get days for, but that was it. So it was pretty pretty short for me to to be in it. I don't know how long they did it in total, <laughs> yeah. but I'm pretty sure they did it pretty quick. They're yeah. pretty talented guys with the camera stuff. So. Yeah, well, I, I did. That was one of the first things I noticed. Like we, look, we're improving our camera work here. <laughs> uh, look, there's a lot. Of, there's a big team behind the scenes, and they're learning every day. They're trying their best. But no, no, I did, I did like. I did like the filmography. I loved like the cut scenes. I loved the like even the little sound effects where it switches. It for me, it seemed a bit quirky. It was it was funny. Uh, I felt like it really tried to. Uh, 
send a few messages to to the audience and, yeah. and I'll get you to talk about them pretty soon. But yeah, you're right. Like the way it was put together was was quite awesome. Like I didn't yeah. see too much difference between like a blockbuster. Obviously, you have your visual effects and all that fun stuff. But this was, a, yeah, a really well put together short film. Yeah, pretty good for a couple of guys. Yeah. Pretty much nearly having their first crack at it. So um, I was pretty impressed with their work and their work ethic just throughout the whole thing. And yeah, went well. So... So in Slugger, so you can watch Slugger on Good Flicks TV. The link's in Jeff's bio. Uh, if you can't type in goodflix.tv <laughs> into your internet browser. Uh, it costs two bucks to watch. Uh, proceeds go to these boys because they obviously spent a lot of time working and to put this together. Yeah. Did, did... Like it goes to, I'm pretty sure some of the proceeds go to Bullyproof Australia, which awesome. is an anti-bullying part with, which I'm to do with, which basically funds anti-bullying things such as Amada. Um, yeah. Yeah, and I'll, I definitely want to talk more about Amada, but we'll, we'll stick to Slugger for now. So, uh, the, the short film was inspired by your life growing up. Yes, so that's right. So, I, I guess just very based, like loosely on like the bullying part. Like, yes, I got bullied at school and I went to boxing and had a fight. So, yeah. based on that, that's sure. where, where it was from. But otherwise, it is just a, a made-up story and it, it's, it's actually... I'm in the in the story as a teacher, so it's me in it. I've I've gone back to school, gone back to teaching, and a kid I see goes through a similar thing that I, I was going through. So um, I teach him how to to box yeah. basically, and he has a fight. So so you became that mentor for uh, it was Sam or Jack, sorry. Yeah, Jack. Uh, you became that mentor for Jack, and uh, it was sorry Rushton, Glenn Rushton was that person for you. Yes, yeah. So I guess I'm. Glenn to this kid as Glenn was to me. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Well said. So I guess um, in in terms of the other correlation, so you had dub boys or yeah. whatever. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's pretty work. funny. Yeah. yeah. Was the creation uh, those two boys or did you have input into the story? Um, look, a little bit, but I, I kind of let them do a lot of that and um, I thought they did pretty good job it was pretty funny yeah. a little like funny and kind of serious at the same time which is um pretty interesting i thought kids the kids that we've shown at least um enjoy watching it so yeah, yeah. so and is was that the target audience it was uh, people or ki- young men and women in high school yeah or? probably more teen yep. teen uh base to try and target them because mm-hmm. i guess they're the ones probably watch majority of that, that type of TV anyway, but yeah. um, it's educational purposes as well. And if it's extremely popular, then possibly we make more of them. Yeah, no, well said. Mm. And yeah, I guess like they're the ones obviously influenced more so by bullying as well. Like as you grow up, bullying still exists, but uh, as you become more of an adult, you learn to not talk to those people. Yeah. You can change your environments, you can yeah. whatever. But as a kid, you, you face that every day. Yeah, exactly. And it's hard to avoid them because you go into the same places them all the time. And yeah. Um, it can happen for adults too at work and things like that. But yeah, it's um, learning the skills of how to deal with uh, what you can do yourself to better prepare yourself for that situation. And um, yeah, I yeah. think it's a, a great film for that and to show that sometimes boxing and fighting isn't about like actually going around fighting people. It's about um, learning self-defense so that you have the confidence to not have to fight back well said well said it so do you show this movie at schools when you go around yeah we've yeah. i've done a couple of talks at schools and um one thing is them showing this on a projector in the hall and things like that and we all sit there watching it so i've seen it a few times now yeah. um and yeah it's it's good fun <laughs> what was your first thoughts when you watched the movie back oh whenever whenever you watch yourself i guess you're a bit like oh gosh <laughs> What am I doing or saying? But I, I felt like I tried to be as natural as I could anyway. But um, like I, I, I enjoyed watching it because I had so much fun making uh, the, the short film. So whether or not we get to do it again, it all depends on how many people watch it. Yeah. So watch it. <laughs> <laughs> watch it. Let us, let us know what you think. Let Jeff know what you think. But uh, yeah, I, I obviously know very well what it's like to watch yourself now. I, I used to avoid 
doing that at all at all costs my whole life yeah. and now i'm unfortunately forced to do it because i want this to turn into something <laughs> so watch this too yeah uh, but, but, uh yeah like i guess you mentioned that you you watched yourself what were some things you thought about yourself when you were oh look i i tr- i was i was reasonably happy because i was just basically being myself yeah. and i've seen myself probably on tv a number of occasions so i'm kind of used to it but I could imagine if I wasn't and if I was to watch myself, how awkward it kind of feels to go, oh, like it's, it's a bit cringy watching yourself trying to, especially when you're trying to act in a, in a certain way. Yeah. Even though I'm acting myself, but in, a, in the future, in, in a circumstance, it's, it's weird. Yeah. And, and also like you're, you're putting on emotion that you don't authentically have. No, exactly. You're, yeah. You're trying to put yourself in the shoes of this thing that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, you, so you don't think acting is going to be a... Oh, I, you never know. With a lot of practice, maybe you'll be all right. But look, I, I try and be angry in there a little bit. And I don't know if my anger really comes off that well, but I don't <laughs> normally get angry very very often. Yeah. And I, 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 through just uh, the research I did for our first chat and then just a couple more articles read since then, you, you do, like a lot of journalists do talk about you. Like it's hard to believe that it's the same person that they see in the ring beating yeah. up Manny Pacquiao coming back against Zarafa like um but, and then they talk to you and you're you're this lovely kind softly spoken <laughs> bloke you know yeah just suck them in so yeah, yeah. Get them. <laughs> <laughs> lower their expectations yeah. Though. Yeah. that's it it's actually a good piece of learning keep your expectations <laughs> yeah. low and you'll always succeed <laughs> um that's great uh so yeah so uh, Amada, you you guys are almost up to the 200k mark raised through Amada, uh from what i've read and the government's committed another half a mil over the next two years to your program yeah so the government have been a massive supporter so I've got to thank them for supporting the program and, and trusting in, in it. And it's doing some amazing things at the moment, changing a lot of lives. Like, I guess we don't realize it when we're, when we're at school and things are happening, but then like, you don't realize how, how much of a spike here, some people's confidence can go down. It can completely shift the way that they, they live. So when we get a mentor in there, and we train them to be more confident and how to be more respectful to people. It just opens up opportunities for them that they wouldn't have had otherwise. Yeah, it, like I, I, the first thing that I think about uh, as you explain that is just what well, I've talked about a, a little bit on this program is just a lot of people living life with the victim's mentality and, and spiting the world for all of the problems in their life. And yeah. like you genuinely feel sorry for those people because they feel like there's no hope. And mm. unfortunately, a lot of people are that way because of the way they've been brought up. Yeah. They might not have had the opportunity to have that mentor to yeah. help them fend for themselves, grow self-confidence, grow self-awareness, learn, change yeah. the environment. Yeah, we need strong people out there, I guess. And yeah. it's only the, the weak people that were probably a majority of the time, I shouldn't say all the time because it's not true, but majority of the time they're the ones making the noise and making the, the the whinging problems and stuff around so if we build everyone up give everyone the strength then um life should be better better for it for no, everyone no, bloody well said and yeah like you said the majority of the time it is the weak people because that they feel better about themselves for a minute when they can talk down about other people or yeah or talk about a problem that doesn't yeah. Need, like yeah well, that's basically what a bully is. They're, they're a weak person and to try and gain some strength back or some confidence back, they're putting other people down using their words or physically as well. Yeah, no, well said. So uh, you, you've mentioned a few times, uh, well, to me and, and outside of this, that you, you were bullied in high school. Yep. Was there, um, like, I, I just want to understand your passion and I feel like I really failed to get through to you um, on this topic the first time we mm-hmm. spoke and... Uh, in hindsight it's for a few reasons but I'd love to talk about it because I'm really passionate about helping people I, I want people to live a happy life I'm trying to figure that out for myself and yeah um, uh, there was a time where I felt like I was small in school and felt like I was, it was hopeless and uh, I'm, I'm very grateful that I'm not like that now but for you and your experience what what, what makes you so passionate about this topic um, just I guess I'm pretty I feel like I'm pretty strong uh, mentally um, so I, I feel like I can deal with majority of stressful situations and things like that but I guess I remember how how weak I felt at that time in my life when even though it wasn't even that bad like I, I feel like my bullying experience was nowhere near as bad as what some kids are going through these days but 
just when someone might latch on to you for for a few months and be calling you names every day, every day they see you and at school, you're normally seeing that person nearly every, all the time. So um, when that just gets drummed into you over and over and over again and your confidence just keeps dropping and dropping and dropping, I had bad thoughts and uh, think I can just imagine how someone even weak, like probably less confident than I was and... Um, has less of a, a family or support group to have with them, um, how much that can affect them. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, like I, I relate to that for sure. And I think in the, uh, in Slugger, you uh, mentioned that you almost went to the dark side. Yeah. Can, can you sort of talk, talk? Well, that, that that was what basically I'm talking about now is mm-hmm. like I had thoughts of like committing suicide when I was a kid. And yeah. um, look, it was only, it was very uh, probably like a, just a thought in your head. I'm like, well, is this really worth worth it? So I, I and because I have that 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 support group around me, I have a loving family. Like I, I quickly got rid of that, and it wasn't something that I kind of thought of again. But these thoughts do go through kids' heads, and I feel like at some point in in your life that does go through your head, and you do think about, well, does does anyone actually want me here? Would, would anyone miss me? If I was gone, so these are the types of questions kids are asking themselves, and if they can't have a support group or someone where they can lean on and go, oh, well, I can I can count on them to really, I think they would miss me if I was gone. Yeah. Um, that's what we've got to worry about, and we've got to really pick these guys up and give them the confidence and make them know that there is a support group like a Mater, like a program like that around with a group of people that have the the same thoughts and experiences to go, we're with you. Yeah, so so bloody important, hey. Like as as much as life is a, a one player game, like you've got to obviously create your own life and do things for yourself. It, we're, we're social animals. We, yeah. we do. We rely so much on the people around us. It's so funny when I hear someone like say, "Oh, like oh, I'm a lone wolf. Like I don't need I don't <laughs> need anyone to survive." Like you're going to Woolies to buy your groceries. Like yeah, you, people are doing things for you all the time without yeah. you maybe even paying attention to it. And that's not my idea, by the way. I've definitely yeah. stolen that from someone way smarter <laughs> than me. But like, I just find that hilarious. Like we we do need others. Yeah. And we're we're so lucky. Well, I feel like I'm so lucky, and I'm not sure if you feel this way. Is that I imagine being a young man 40 years ago. And just how difficult it would have been to talk about what we're talking about now. Talk yeah. about feeling weak. Talk about not being a man. And we've come such a long way yeah. to make that more socially appropriate. Oh, exactly. It's um, it's opened the doors for for guys as well, and that's a it's a big problem around the place. And um, just that anyone can talk. If you've got problems, there will be someone that will will listen and won't judge you for for what you're saying. No, well said. And yeah, plenty of programs out there these days, which thank God that they are for, for those things. And the yep. more serious ones, we can chuck out like Lifeline. Uh, you got Black Dog, uh, yep. there's, uh, 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 Beyond Blue. There's, yeah, so many. Um, but yeah, so Amada, uh, you, you mentioned you go and do talks at school sometimes. You show the yep. movie, kids obviously piss themselves. I imagine, <laughs> I imagine being 15 and watching that, I'd be cracking up. Yeah, um, they do find it funny because... As close as we try and get it to a, a real situation, it's so hard to kind of mimic it exactly. So um, there's some little points in it, which is probably things we could have improved on. That they're just like, oh, that that kind of <laughs> would that really happen? Yeah, maybe it does out right. there. It probably does happen similar to this, but yeah. Yeah, it's not exactly probably. Of course, and and that's learning. You mentioned it was the first one that these guys exactly. put together. I remember my first chat with you, and I was like, there's so many things I'd want to change. And, yeah. and we all get better. But yeah, I, what, like, what are some messages that you hear uh, kids or teachers or parents talk about when they when they watch the film? Um, look, probably the main thing is is just the way that boxing or or learning self-defense or something will give them confidence. I guess they, they kind of get that from it, which I guess help help me as well. But then um, just ignoring ignoring the bully as much as you can, even though Jack doesn't do that as much in, in the short film. Yeah, um, yeah it's more about um, th- th- they see that getting confidence in themselves by doing something that they're good at will normally change an outcome. Yeah, yeah, it's 
it's like I, again in hindsight such a beautiful thing and we're so lucky we can be adults and think about what how we were as kids but yeah like the, what you're in that situation obviously first and foremost because of the bully but also because you let that fear control you don't you yeah and and again if you don't have any support or if you don't know any better you're just going to stay in that situation uh so amade you, you do your, your talks it, what and I, I read about role play activities Oh, okay. occasionally we get some kids up and we, we demonstrate uh, a few things about okay. um, a bullying scenario yeah. and that's kind of shown to the other kids. Um, more that's about numbers, I guess. Um, bullies are the mon- minority around. Mm. There's less bullies out there than they're not bullies. So I guess if people stick together and uh, normally the bully will feel like they want to jo- join the group that's not doing it. So yeah. that's what we're trying to, to paint the picture uh, when we do the demonstrations. To Try, trying to instill, yeah. Now that, that's so interesting to think about bullies as the minority because again, that's probably not another feeling that I had in, in high school or in primary school. Right? Like I, I sort of, and they definitely were, but they're always sort of in with the cool kids that you You feel like they're and, supported by everyone. Yes. Because they are the, the probably cool kid that's doing it, but no one's probably really happy even though you might have the few that are laughing and patting them on the back for doing it but are they really happy are they really happy that they're they're doing that if they are they're probably they're bullying you basically the same as that person is actually the one saying it because they feel low enough to go oh yeah that's cool let's all put this guy down and let's all cheer about and give each other's high fives like why it's so weak yeah, it, it is. And, and that, again, that's another hard thing that it took me a long time to learn is that these bullies are weak. Like it's not, as a kid, it's really difficult to put yourself in someone else's shoes. And as you grow more mature, you can, you can learn to do that. And it's easier to have empathy for different people that even the bullies of the yeah. world. But is that something that you try to like instill in these kids? Yeah. Too? Like the, the kids that are the ones pushing kids over, like they're actually hurting too. Yeah, like I guess we talk to everyone and say the reason a bully is a bully is because normally their confidence, we explain to them. It's probably because it's happening to them either through a family member, an older person um, in their family or or around them in in some way. Someone's bullying them or putting them down to make them feel like they need to put someone else down. It's it's a domino effect really that the bullying is and when it ends up in school, that's where majority of it kind of starts and then it's learned there and then it continues on it just keeps on repeating itself over and over again so until we can knock that on its head we're just gonna have the same problem yeah and yeah like you just highlighted a ton of other issues as well it's the the, the parents that are the parents of these bullies and yeah. those home environments domestic violence it's yeah. just unfortunately the world is full of just a lot of issues mm. uh but on the contrary to that it, like the data from again a lot more smart people than me um, it, they share is that we are improving in so many of these these facets, which is so awesome to hear and talk about. But the media doesn't say that. There's no. not many people that say that. Everyone wants to believe that the world's ending and everything's yeah. bloody terrible. Yeah, there's always there's always something bad happening. Uh, but I guess media is always going to latch onto the things that people are going to be more like, whoa, that, yeah. that really that that's that's happening around the corner from us. So. Yeah. Um, we've got to try and focus as much as we can on the good that's happening, but it doesn't sell, I guess, as much as bad stuff. Yeah. That's why I'm going to title this video, Jeff Horn calls out Tim Zoo. Yeah. And we're going to get tons of you. <laughs> <laughs> <No. laughs> Which you thought I did it in April. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, oh, yeah th- this is actually really funny to talk about. Jeff on his Instagram posted a news article. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, my, my production Ooh, team's giving me some notes. <laughs> Jeff, uh, <laughs> Jeff uh, put, put this New Jersey article on Facebook saying that uh, he was considering a rematch with Tim Zoo, but it was an April Fool's joke. Yeah, it was on April 1st. I was yeah. like, well, what am I going to do this year? I haven't done anything. I'm like trying to think. I'm like, a rematch with Tim, even though I don't really, really yeah. want one. But yeah. At that time, I was like, yep, this would, this would be good. And <laughs> obviously, I got people because you still thought I was yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> Potentially fighting it. Yeah, well, no, I, yeah, I obviously didn't see anywhere else that it was in, in the works or happening, but I'm like, oh man, Jeff's keen. Like, he's, he's, he's keen, he's ready to go. Um, no, that, that was really funny. I guess the April Fool's joke then kind of turns around on me then again. Yeah. <laughs> now people, people are actually like, 
you're fighting again, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. No, so, yeah, t- tough love for you. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, want, I wanted to pull out uh, just a, one little message that you um, highlight in Slugger that you mentioned that your mentor uh, mentioned to you and you obviously mentioned it to, to Jack, but all it takes to reach the stars is a leap of faith. Yeah. Now, obviously, your leap of faith was to box to yep. fight professionally and to take on this well i, I took a lot of leaps <laughs> i guess to get to where i was i guess having a first fight if anyone hasn't had a fight you can imagine the experience of what it's like you've got to train yeah. and then you're getting in the ring against someone that's trying to basically punch you in the head and stop you so it, it's a tough thing to kind of mentally get over and prepare for and then after doing that then going straight into state titles, national titles, fighting for world titles. It was just, I had to just keep believing in myself to be able to go to that next level. Yeah. And so, like, where does that belief come from? Does it come from the success before beforehand? Is it just, is it momentum? Did, did you always think that I am going to be a world champion? Like, No, well, not... I, when I was a kid, I always thought, but this is this is it. nearly every kid, I feel like. Every kid thinks that they're going to be the best at something or like really good at something. And normally that's something in sport. I thought for me it was going to be football, soccer. Yeah. So that was where I, what my attention was. And I played soccer for 12 years, but never went, it, never went anywhere with it. So I was in this place at the end of school. I was like, well what am I going to do? Like I always wanted to do sport, which is why I started a degree in teaching yep. sport um, for a living because I just loved it. But at the same time, I was like, well, I'm going to have to learn how to protect myself, protect Joe, yep. go out in nightclubs. There's idiots out there bloody throwing punches just randomly at people for no reason. So I was like, well, I'm going to learn how to fight yeah. and learn how to protect myself so that if something bad does happen, I can I can use it. And obviously fueled by those experiences um, growing up. Mm. And uh, yeah, like obviously your your uh, motivations were the, the self-defense, were the, was the protection. It was first and foremost uh, looking after yourself. Yeah. And then it grew into, holy crap. Yeah, I was good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I was, I would be that good even though I knew how competitive I was. Yeah. And I guess something like fighting, boxing, you need to be an extremely competitive person to, because you've got to push yourself all the time. There's no one else in, there's no team going, um, well, you kind of do have a team, but um, there's no there's no one really pushing you other than how far you can push yourself. And um, that's come from the inside and um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, no one's going to do it be yourself that's yeah. unfortunately i think I, was, I think i said this to you first when we spoke unfortunately it's the truth but fortunately it's the truth it's yeah just up to you and man it's life's hard yeah <laughs> life's hard um but yeah if you find that passion find that passion bloody follow it that's, yeah that's what i'm trying to do like you mentioned growing up you thought you were going to be a sports star i myself and my best friend bryce who this logo is about and i finally got him on the podcast a few episodes ago and um, we always said we're going to be the next Hamish and Andy. So like, I've <laughs> always had this thing in my head that was going to be on TV. Maybe I'm subconsciously trying to do that now. Yeah. Consciously, probably. It's a good um, thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And who knows what will come from it. But um, I, I, all I do know is that if I decided not to give this a go six or eight months ago, whenever it was, I'd always be wondering. I'd always yeah. be wondering. But now I'm here. I've been able to speak to amazing people. I've got you on for a second time. Yeah. You've forgiven me from hey, the first it's, mishap. It's experiences anyway. Yeah. Life is about experiences and um, you're doing this now. It could potentially grow into something big, which I hope it does for you guys. But if it doesn't, it's you've had fun doing it, right? And yeah. that's what life's all about is just having fun, doing whatever you're doing. And Yeah, you're not going to regret trying to do something that you love doing or trying to... Like, you're going to always learn something. You're, like that leap of faith. Yeah. yeah exactly. The only way to reach the stars. Or the, all it takes is the way yeah, to reach the stars. Unreal. Yeah. Um, the, I, I forgot to ask this question earlier when we are talking about Slugger, but how did you actually find the acting? So, we talked about you watching yourself and you yeah. talked about trying to put on emotion. But, yeah. like, what was it actually like? Well, I just tried to imagine, I guess, what I would be like. I guess I've been a teacher. Yes. Um. I've been in the situation of being bullied and everything. Like, if I actually saw it in real life, I would be angry. 
So I'm trying to imagine what I'd be like and how enthusiastic I'd be in that situation. And um, I think I did it as how I would be, but uh, I guess you probably <laughs> never know. Well, I think you sold it to me. Like, yeah, you, I thought you definitely did a good job as that teacher. Yeah. Well, the good thing is I only had to act myself. So yeah, it's not true. as hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not trying to be, uh, what's it? What's the uh, the actors called that like lose a lot of weight? Are they method acting? Yeah, like your Christian Bales or your uh, Matthew McConaughey's Heath Ledger's. Like they are, man, like that. that is taking acting to the next level. Yeah, isn't it? Like, oh. yeah how like... Le- Heath Ledger, how he can play as a Joker. Yeah, like he did such a good job. An it's like ridiculous job. job at playing him. But I think he he had to go a little bit crazy to get into that character. Yeah, um, well, probably. Yeah, you're probably right yeah. there. And I think about Heath Ledger on Ten Things Out About You, that that rom com. So he's like yeah. this this uh, bad boy in high school yeah. now playing the Joker. True. It's just incredible. I remember growing up thinking, oh, acting's easy. Like, oh, all you have to do is just pretend it just do yeah. something but as you now but, know and yeah but that's all you have to do yeah. it's true but to make people believe that yeah. is is the hardest part because you've actually got got to do it yeah like not just do it but from the inside feel it yeah because you like you can't you, it's so obvious when you're talking to someone who's lying or like faking who they are you yeah. can see right through them but everyone says like the best movies or shows are the ones where you forget you're watching a show. Like it's the story or the people have captivated you so much. And yeah. Obviously, it comes right back to the acting. Yep, exactly. Obviously, the storyline too. Yeah. Shit story. Like <laughs> Sharknado 3. <laughs> <laughs> the acting could have been <laughs> perfect. But uh, yeah. No. Um, I do want to ask a couple more questions about Tim Zoo and fighting, but mm-hmm. uh, I'm going to save them for our Patreon. Before we go into those, though, I've got a couple of fan questions. If, yeah. you, if you'd like, if you'd let sure. me ask them. These from you? Uh, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> um, they're from a, cu- <laughs> a, a couple of uh, mates who, who sent them in, and Andy Murray. I'm going to give a shout out to right now. And he one, one question that he asked was, "What was the best excuse you heard from a student to skip PE when you're a PE teacher?" Oh, the best excuse. Gosh, I can't remember, but. I can remember like the constant excuse was the uniform. Yeah. Like always kids would not wear the proper uniform just to get out of it. So that was the main thing. What they'd wear like their formal. Yeah. And the rules were you had to wear your other other sport uniform and or they wouldn't wear the right shoes. I'd wear something ridiculous. I don't know. There would always be something that the kids would try and get away and that was mainly uniform. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But nothing creative or... Oh, to get out of sport, exciting. not really, because you really have the probably really lazy ones and that don't really want to make up anything. So yeah. they're just like, ah, I can't do it because I haven't got the right shoes on. Right. So yeah. <laughs> I left my cigs at home, so yeah. I have the nicotine and Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So it's the lazy ones. Yeah. Ones aren't going to make up a whole heap of stuff to, right. to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, they're not going to use that brain power. Because it's fun. Why would you want to skip sport? That is true. I don't get yeah. it. The only good I'm class. I'm a sporty dude. I love sport. Yeah. Yeah, get outside. What are you gonna do yeah. instead? Like, look at what what overhead projectors. Remember them? Overhead projectors is riding yeah. what was on the sc- oh, exactly. Christ. Um, that's another thing about school that I'm passionate about. Is like you mentioned that you you thought you're gonna be a soccer star. Like I've had thoughts about TV or whatever. But school kind of stamps that out of you, doesn't it? Like it teaches you to just well play it safe. I guess you you're measured against so many other people and. Normally, you're not the highest one in school. And if you are, normally you've got high expectations on yourself. And if you don't reach high expectations after school, which a lot of kids don't, then depression happens. And that's where a lot of, I guess, social problems, I guess, yeah. mental problems kind of exist. Yeah. And if you, if you, if you can't perform because you're, like, you, you're looking up all these people performing so well, you're like, well, how am I meant to compete? Yeah. How am I meant to do what I'm meant to do? Like, I want to be this, an astronaut or whatever, but, like, there's heaps of other smart kids in the grade that are beating you. It's like, well, how? there's not many astronauts out there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's kind of a double-edged sword because, like, I, I guess my gripe with it is that it teaches you to play it safe. And, like, I feel like I've played it safe my whole life and yeah. was depressed because of that. Yeah. But also, if you set your expectations too high, 
then you will constantly compare to yourself to other people and depression can come from that too. So it's yeah. kind of kind of interesting to think about. Uh, my other thought with that, and I know I'm a massive, uh, what's the word when I do it? Um, well, I do this, but is like when, when you expect some of it, don't put the work in and like, and then you, yeah, you hate yourself or you get angry at yourself for not putting the work in mm. and then depression comes from that too. Um, but yeah, very interesting. And, but that was, that was always my thing with school. Yeah. Was the, yeah. Well, they gave so. OPs or ranks or yeah. whatever to, to say you're, you're here on the yeah. ladder. This is where you sit. Yeah, so <laughs> I remember don't I, think you're up here. You're actually here. So oh, I got an OP 12 and I'd never tell anyone I got an OP 12, but I got an A on the QCS, which is like our uh, final test for the yeah. year. And I always <laughs> told people I couldn't have the QCS. Yeah. Man, social status. It's just uh, so funny to, yeah. 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 I did hopeless at school. 13's good. <laughs> 13 was what I was aiming for. Yeah, well, 13 yeah. is. OP12's not bad, bro. Yeah. Oh, it's middle. It's like. It's, it's not bad. Yeah. To get into most I, I, I only needed to get, I think, OP13 to get into teaching, and I still didn't get that. So I needed right. to do another year of study out of school oh, at TAFE yeah. to upgrade to, I think it got me to an OP5. Yeah. A year outside of school to, to get to what I wanted to do. So, so all what, I wanted to do was teaching, which was the 13. So they got you up to a five. What, what does that teach you? Don't worry about high school kids. Just do a year of TAFE afterwards and an OP. That's crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. So. Yeah. Oh, man. And then also crazy to expect that you know what you're going to do for the rest of your life when you're bloody 16, 17. Yeah, years it's tough. I still don't know. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure you Look, some know. kids are like do super well and like have like a doctor's degree at what, yeah. like, in the early 20s it's ridiculous but it is ridiculous <laughs> god man um what is the your favorite punch in your arsenal uh i'd say overhand right yeah that's what you hit zarafa with yeah. today in the ninth round twice yep. <laughs> yeah that oh man that that was cool that yeah it's cool you won by decision in that fight yep. in the end yeah how are you still going do you how was I still going yeah. on the fire? I was all right by the end of it. But like at like the start of the ninth, you looked. <sighs> I was. Yeah. I know. I feel like I always get that dip in, in fights, and it's always around that round nine. Yeah, and then you get the second win. Yeah. Yeah. So it must be like I'm pushing like majority of the fight. I'm, I've got a high work rate, but it must come to a point where my body goes. It's about that time. <laughs> we can't keep pushing anymore. You've got to have like a little bit of a break. Yeah. So whether I should mentally think about that, but then my, the opponent thinks. This is where yeah, I go hard. Go. So yeah. it's a tricky thing in fighting to, to work around. So the key is, and, and if you do phase two again, this is what you'll do, is you'll get cut open and then you'll go to the dock and get a little break. Yeah. <laughs> then, yeah. I've just got to stop him before the night. Yeah, That's true. what I'll have to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's easier said than done too. Yeah, yeah. oh, bloody <laughs> oath. He's a fellow fighter. Um, but sorry, one more question before we talk about that real quick. Uh, what's who, like which fighter have you faced that had the hardest punch? Was it was it Tim? Was it Manny? No, uh, who would have had the hardest punch? Probably uh, Randall Bailey. Yep. I think the punch that he hit me with was just he had heavy hands. Like there's guys that you hit that have sharp, like a sharp shot, like a jolting shot. Yep. And Manny Pacquiao was more like that. Yes. He had like that in between of a hard and and jolty punch, but. Um, yeah, Randall Bailey just had heavy hands and it was probably just his technique of how he threw, but he was just like whack, <laughs> just this big punch and he got me perforated my eardrum and everything and I went all out like dizzy. Yeah, yeah that was the done now. He was the, the hardest one. puncher. That's the one. I Yeah, just the way you're describing uh, his punch, it made me think of Francis Ngannou's just hands the world heavyweight champion now for ufc yeah and just he is just a bloody monster <laughs> hand right same punch that you like um yeah oh i'm not a fighter eh? just, <laughs> just, just oh, i'm so timid yeah 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 yeah, I'll just, yeah, I'll just start taking my clothes off yeah just they don't get on your knees like please true i never thought of that I'm doing yeah <laughs> Quick tip for Zarafa Zoo was announced. Yeah, I th I think Zoo Zoo wins. I think Zarafa is a very tough dude, and he always comes super fit. Yeah. But I think skill wise, Zoo has got that toughness, but he's got that skill there as well. So I think 
Um, I think he's just got that super confidence about him now as well after beating me, being, being Dennis Hogan. Yeah, he's Dennis he's Hogan. starting to, he's just climbing and climbing and um, I think he's, he's take, just going to be too good. Yeah, take someone special to stop him, eh? Yeah. Yeah, no, thanks for the tip. So I'm going to ask Jeff one more question about the future of his fighting career, if he's happy to answer for our Patreon listeners. If you want to support this program, you can for five bucks a month. It's a coffee. Just every Tuesday, don't have a coffee, subscribe to our Patreon, keep me doing this because I really want to do it forever. Um, you'll get access to this rest of the chat with Jeff and a few other really cool things we've got up on there. Uh, if you like what we're trying to do, please like, subscribe, follow Jeff. You probably got you're getting here, so follow mm-hmm. me, like this, do all that fun stuff. Really pre- appreciate all the help. Um, and a quick shout out to Moby Tech Queensland. Uh, really appreciate your support on this program. If you mention Carby TV with them, you get 10% off. Uh, all your computer needs, mobile technician, he'll sell you the best technology, he'll fix your technology. Uh, Jeff's a massive advocate for Wayne and Moby Tech Queensland. We're talking about it for an hour before this program started and he just couldn't show up about how great they were. Um, but support them, uh, support us by going through them and thank you guys for your time and thank you, Jeff. Thanks, Carl.